Hi, my name is Marcy Stair, and I'm working here in the Paleo Prep Lab here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. Today, I'm working on a set of neurospines that belong to Dimetrodon. As you can see, it's a clump of spines. Normally, his spines, if you did your fingers out like this, his spines would go like that. But over time, and due to the pressure of being fossilized, they've kind of come together like this. And so my goal is to remove the matrix, the rock-like stuff that you see here, and leave the bone exposed. But at the same time, we want to make them as neat uh, as, as we possibly can so we can get the best use of looking at the bones. So I'm using a tool called an air scribe that uses compressed air to vibrate this needle back and forth hundreds of times a second. So it helps to just flake away little bits of the rock, the matrix at a time. And like I said, the guy I'm working on, the critter is called Demetrodon. And he's a guy who lived here in Texas about 285 million years ago. He is not a dinosaur. He lived that tens of thousands of years before dinosaurs show up in the fossil record. And he is a type of animal we call a synapsid. Um, mammals are synapsids too, and he is actually more closely related to mammals than he is to dinosaurs. In real life, the Metrodon would have been probably in the 10 to 15 foot range of length, depending on which species we were looking at. And he probably weighed between 400 and 500 pounds. He was the apex predator, the biggest meat eater. He had um, two different types of teeth. That's what his name means, two sizes of teeth. He had big fangs in the front and smaller fangs on the back uh, of his jaws and he, they were all serrated. So he could sort of bite through whatever it was he was looking, uh, looking to eat. Most of what he ate were um, amphibians and also some freshwater shark that happened to live in the area. And having amphibians and sharks in your habitat lets you think that probably that was a pretty wet habitat. Uh, lakes and ponds and swamps and things like that. Uh, a lot different than what North Texas looks like today. What do you think the sale was for? Um, we don't know 100%, but looking at animals in the past and in the present that have had sales, there's a couple of ideas. One is that it could be used for thermal regulation. Um, it would be, you know, he could turn, you know, have it go sideways into the sun so that it could absorb heat if he needed to uh, warm up a little bit uh, or kind of face directly in, you know, side, you know, looking, you know, pointed into the sun if he needed to cool down. Uh, the other thing is that that sail was about a good four feet tall. So it made him look a lot bigger. So if he needed to look a little bigger to kind of be able to protect territory or kind of scare off maybe other critters that would have been coming that way. And then the final way is the way that, you know, animals use a lot of fancy things to, to attract a mate. And one of the ways that you would see that is that, you know, it takes a lot of energy to produce something like a sail. Um, and so if you've got a nice, healthy sail, it shows that you've got a pretty healthy genetic makeup and you might make a good partner for that, for that other, other critter. That's really cool. Thank you so much. Sure, you guys have a good day.